Boom. <clears throat> Team, welcome back to another episode of Live for Compete. I am joined in the studio with Saad Alami. Saad, welcome. Hey, what is up, everyone? Very honored to be here, Ed. Thank you so much for inviting me. Saad, back in the studio. This is this yeah. is your uh, this is your birthing round, right? Uh, I'm I'm very excited, and today I have a very important mission and role, which is to interview Ed. So uh, we're gonna switch roles for this episode. Hope you guys don't mind. So I think where this conversation stemmed from, it's it's relevant to the times right now. Um, we all woke up on Monday to a um, bit of a shitstorm on social media. Craig Glassman coming out with a statement uh, and some pursuing emails that have been sent around the community. Uh, the community then reacting very, very quickly. And I guess people like myself and, and this organization were put under some pressure to make a statement quickly and to show um, to, to show acknowledgement for what had happened and, and what our stance was on it. Um, but then, you know, I think just a lot of thought has gone into, you know, what, what does this now mean? And there's, there's a lot of unknown. Two days ago, Greg Glassman has stood down as CEO. Dave Castro has stood up into the role. Um, but really, apart from that, we don't really know too much else. Uh, another quick fire statement this morning, uh, Dave Castro jumped on a Zoom call with all the CrossFit Games athletes in 2020, and apparently he will no longer be doing the programming for the CrossFit Games as of 2021, and Rich Froney may be doing it, and that was literally all that was, all that was released. And again, once again, in very much CrossFit fashion, it was a short statement on an Instagram post, and we don't really know anything else. Where this conversation comes into it was, I think, the other night, I was I got stuck into the corridor speaking to a few of our members who um, probably had, had, yeah, had the intention of asking me like a 10 second question. And as usual, I went on a 10 minute rant about everything. Um, and Sad kind of came out, came out the office and just kind of leaned against the wall and, and started just listening, in. listening in the conversation. And then it eventually finished and you went, we should do a podcast. We need to do a podcast on that. <laughs> and let's, uh, let's just have a conversation. So. Genuinely, we haven't structured this at all. I have no idea what Sal's going to ask me. Um, my thoughts have kind of evolved and changed every single day. The last couple of days, I really haven't put any thought towards it. So yeah. I think, you know, maybe I'll just be critically thinking and changing my viewpoint as we go mm -hmm. through this episode. That's totally fine. Uh, I think what I would love to achieve <laughs> with this episode is have a good balance of your personal opinion and what you felt at that moment. And at the same time also maybe give your perspective and maybe some kind of guidance to people out there that need it in this in this time of where there's no real leaders that's that, that's for just for personally for me but let's let's dive straight into it. <laughs> it i want to know that morning when that tweet was sent out walk us through how you felt what happened where were you walk us through that moment <clears throat> when you first saw so the, so the story for me was that I woke up and I had a message on my WhatsApp from one of our one of our long term members. Now lives in the US um, and he follows the process very young, not my client, also a good friend of mine. And he kind of sent there was about three articles he'd sent through to me straight away. First thing in the morning, so I, I, I tell a lie, not first thing in the morning, I've gone through my breakfast routine, he was about to step out. Step out home. Phone, right? No, try not to. Right. So this exact reason yeah. is why I don't check my phone first thing in the morning. About to step out the home and get on my day and, and you know start reading these messages and start just kind of educate myself. Okay, what's been said, and before I kind of make any decision or, or, or pass it on to anyone else within this organization, you know, just try to understand the story myself. Um, initial, and then you know, I guess the next thing was, well, let's. What, what is the kind of reaction from the, from the general? The general public here so then you know you go onto social media and already very very quickly it's kind of blowing up everywhere and so really like first as soon as i read it I didn't really have any it didn't come to any conclusions i didn't make any decisions it was just like let's see how this rolls out during the day you know you never know they may come up with another statement next hour and which changes everything but then you know over the next 24 hours um momentum grew certainly amongst the community of people who weren't in favor of what was said. Uh, a lot of people jump into conclusions very, very quickly. So you know, um, whether it's unaffiliating, whether it was you know, renouncing their participation in the CrossFit Games, whether it was perhaps even supporting CrossFit and saying give it another chance. Um, and then you know, as, a, as a day rolled on, it ended up, Monday's always a really busy day for us anyway. You know, as an organization, we're all, we have meetings, we have 
a lot of our time is spent with clients, so there's not really a whole amount of time on that Monday to just kind of be alone with my thoughts and think about it. So the day kind of finished, and then, you know, I certainly felt, uh, and you know, this is just the day and age that we live in with social media and how easy it is to share opinions. I definitely felt a bit under pressure to have to get an opinion out there. I was, I was receiving personal messages and in-person questions like, well, what are you going to do? What's coaching going to do? What's your stance in it? And to be honest, in the day, I was like, I really haven't had a chance to just kind of think about it. So we actually spoke about it in our team meeting. We have team meeting every Monday. Uh, and kind of just said to the team, that was, that was everyone, all the coaches, all the operations staff, and said, hey, this has happened now. I just would be interested to hear your initial views on it. And as a team, we kind of went around the circle. Some people didn't really have an opinion on it. Uh, some people like yourself had some, some yeah. really valuable insights. And I can, I can share real quick. Yeah, yeah, actually, sure. Because um, I remember when that happened, and Ed came in, and he was very careful to he didn't make a judgment or whatever. He was very careful, like he's always is, uh, always is. And in that meeting, he was generally interested in everyone's opinion, and everyone had their opinion. And my opinion was, okay, let's just, well, take a step back. Let's not rush into any decision. And I felt generally that was the atmosphere that we're, what we're all in. We don't want to make an emotional decision, a rush, a rush decision. Uh, and that's what most coaches and staff members were feeling. I think it's just a massive difference, you know, there is the difference between responding and reacting. You know, reacting is where, is where we, you know, emotionally, emotionally charged, we jump to rash decisions. Uh, and, you know, responding is, you know, making a rational decision, void of emotion and, and the, the feeling in the moment, which takes time. You need to, like, collect data. Absolutely. You need to, like, gather opinions. You need to think a little bit more long term about what decision are you going to make and why are you making it. And that was actually a really good conversation. I already had kind of some of my, my own grounded thoughts that jumped into my head immediately, but then hearing the team made me perhaps take a slightly different stance. And we were quite divided actually as a team. Yeah. We had some people who were like, unaffiliate now, yeah. this is not acceptable. You had others who were saying, you know, forgiveness is important, like, you know, what has CrossFit done for us as an organization. Other people kind of sat on the spectrum probably between the two. For me, I guess coming to the decision, and I, I put a post out that evening, and I think initially we, myself, after the team meeting, I sat down with Ant and Nick, which I guess is the thing I found manager I've seen here, and said, you know, what are our thoughts on this? Initial thoughts were like, well, let's not unaffiliate straight away like the rest of the world is doing right now. Let's think about it. Let's watch the space. Let's see what changes are made. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, we got to about six o'clock, and actually Ant sent me a message and said, the more and more I think about this, I think unaffiliation is a good call. I said, I'm really happy you said that because that's how I've been feeling all day. And here's the reason why for us. The reason we are affiliated or we put the statement out to say we will not be continuing with our affiliation actually really doesn't have all that much bearing on, on the words that were said with Greg Glassman. I don't think there was necessarily like racist intent or malicious intent of what was said. Not so much like a, a, a differentiation in values of CrossFit versus Coastal Fitness, but more that this is a decision that's been in the back of my mind for probably the last three years when we've been asked to renew our affiliation, you know, we're a company who doesn't necessarily affiliate with where CrossFit, it's not in our branding, it's not used for classes, it's not used as marketing material to pull people into this organization. We're a strength and conditioning organization that's trying to improve people's lives, right? We enjoy mixed modal training modalities, which is initially stemmed from CrossFit in my, tra in my professional development experience, but by no means like, does that define us as an organization? So we don't really lean on CrossFit for anything really. We do obviously have a competitive environment of people who want to compete in the sport, but you know, again, we have a rep I think we've been around long enough that our, rep our reputation precedes us that we don't have to use that from a marketing standpoint. Something we definitely do invest in is a CrossFit Open every year. We enjoy that from like a community standpoint, and it's like one of the events on our calendar that we really get behind. But really, in the last three years, I've decided to continue the affiliation fee. It's more of anything, just like a means of giving back. I paid that affiliation fee because I'm really, really appreciative of what CrossFit has done to me. I obviously have athletes who compete in the sport and want to get to the CrossFit Games, and I understand that the affiliation fees can be an important part in ensuring that that side of the sport continues. Because I'm also a massive fan of the sport, and I want to see the sporting side continue to flourish and grow much more than, I guess, 
the general health of the affiliation side, that side of CrossFit, I've never really been too far too behind. You know, to kind of take it back a year or so, CrossFit closed down all their social media pages. They made big drastic cuts in the media, which like I think that really hurt affiliates. We weren't getting exposure anymore. The perception of the brand CrossFit is, if we're honest, definitely has much more of a negative connotation than positive. And I think with all these big changes in the last year, the public perception of CrossFit is like it's 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 different than it was five years ago. And so five five years ago when we first got into this game, like it made sense to have it. But now it's like, well what do we actually get back from being an affiliated gym? If we're not leveraging the brand anymore from in terms of acquiring new members uh, or acquiring new customers, we don't really get any education from um, the education body of CrossFit. We don't really get any exposure because social media is no longer there. Now there's the CrossFit Games is that even going ahead? You know, my athletes actually weren't going this year anyway because you know the national champions division was all because closed out. But that was COVID nineteen, right? Um, so you know it became a very hard thing to justify now. And so you know I said I said on my Instagram one of the comments was that this was just the final straw that broke the camel's back, and it was not so much the statements that were released, but more that like. Well, really, look at the community. Like the community is crumbling right now, which means that the validity of having CrossFit title name is even less than it was 24 hours ago. So for us, it doesn't really make sense to stay affiliated. Now, if we were in an organisation that that leveraged off the CrossFit brand, let's say we were CrossFit Coastal, like that might be a really different conversation to have. You know, and I think it's a hard conversation for gyms who are really closely tied to brand and built an organisation with uh, based purely on CrossFit and. And that's you know the word is reflected in their methodology and their promotional material and their marketing. You know that's a tough one. You know I, when you even go back to us again, like the cross at level one isn't even uh, an essential prerequisite for us hiring coaches anymore. You know we really like, we really kind of distanced ourselves in the last ten years. So I'm very interested in your decision making pro, uh, process three years ago when you decided to step away from CrossFit. Why was that? back and especially three years ago maybe it wasn't the most popular thing to do I know maybe Jason Khalifa did, back in the day start, uh, started by not using CrossFit mm. in his branding etc could you yeah it's actually, so actually when, when we were first affiliated actually it's six years ago now now the, the funny story is at the point of creating our this first facility because remember Coastal Fitness was a, was a standalone organization that was doing personal training and remote coaching that's what we did okay. to start for four years okay. and then we opened up our facility and you know at the point we've been dabbling in CrossFit a lot wanted to run a group program and really loved the principles of CrossFit and when I say the principles you know I'm talking about the prin principles of mixed modal fitness which is a combination of weightlifting gymnastics and, and energy and monostructure exercise you know I love that combination Call it CrossFit, call it circuit training, call it like interval based training. Like it's been done for years. CrossFit is really the one that kind of brought it and they created the sport side of it. So at that point in time, as we were like signing on the lease, Reebok actually approached us and said, We heard you guys make the CrossFit gym, you know, been following you guys for a while on your social media pages. We want to work with you. Let's brand this Reebok CrossFit Coastal. And so, and it was quite flattering at the time. Oh, I didn't know that. No, you didn't know that. Yeah. So, it was flattering because you're like, wow, look, we're, we're, we're new players in the game. We're already being recognised as a, you know, a group of people who are going to probably do something quite good. And Reebok and CrossFit want to endorse us. And the more and more I thought about it, I was genuinely a day away from signing a dotted line. And I thought, you know what? Like, this is dangerous. We've built our brand for four years as an organisation already, and we have a fantastic loyal following that hasn't been built around CrossFit at all. It's strength conditioning, personal training outdoor group training that's really who we were and Dave Castro is a nutter this is our, our conversation already. Dave Castro is a nutter and he is the head of this organization and I think at any point in time this could all crumble gloriously oh. so let's not put our name to it now fast forward six years <laughs> it wasn't Dave Castro it was actually Greg Glassman who in all honesty I massive respect as uh, a CEO a leader a public speaker, like I've actually been really inspired by him and following his journey the last year, you know, really until this all just happened. Um, I really, I'd foreseen that it was going to be Mr. Dave Castro that mm -hmm. was going to like crumble this organization, and therefore we said we're not going to have our name to it. And you know, here we are. It's so lucky we made that decision. And this is very, um, 
this is a big differentiator between uh, because your background is uh, is completely different than most CrossFit gyms. Most CrossFit gyms, I think, from my experience, start as a CrossFit gym. Mm. You started from a strength and conditioning background, mm. right? And a lot of CrossFit affiliates have evolved into a strength and conditioning mm. gym yeah. in a way where they stepped away from CrossFit and just took what they loved and made it their own blend. Yeah, I guess so he started that there, theology, yeah. which is very interesting. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a big differentiator. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, for sure. So, um, what did you think of this methodology with your background of um, strength and conditioning, seeing that all this and, and their philosophy around training, etc.? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've probably has evolved, but yeah, I, I, I find it. In, I find it very interesting for sure. I think the thing, and I think this is the big, the big problem with CrossFit, and where the public perception gets very skewed, is the difference between CrossFit the sport and CrossFit the training methodology, which is trying to improve people's lives. Yeah. And that's where there's, there's this weird, strange blend of this lack of perception. So the perception being, number one, it's a lack of perception understanding from a lot of CrossFit gyms. You know, they're, they're making the promise that you come to the CrossFit gym and we're gonna help you move better, feel better, get stronger, live happier, healthier lives. But the programming, the coaching, is reflecting the sport of CrossFit, which is, heavy snatches, muscle ups, walking on your hands, and that's where there's a loss of translation. So people who are coming for improvements in general health end up training for a sport, and you know that whenever you chase training for the sport, there is a higher risk involved in terms of injury and health. And so, from my perspective, I never really saw the validity in the CrossFit methodology that you learned in level one for improving the general consumer's Quality from the get-go, from the beginning. Yeah, it didn't make sense to me to, to have my mum learn Olympic lifting and, you know, like work towards doing the inversions, mm -hmm. being upside down, and, you know, doing extremely high intensity conditioning bouts. You know, and, you know, our, our, our knowledge has evolved as coaches to know that perhaps that's not necessarily what they were preaching at level one, but certainly like the stigma that the general um, in a way, understanding of CrossFit yeah, was what it was, definitely. you know, you do short, in high intensity, yeah. do medium, moderate intensity, yeah. do long, so intensity. Because I think in the level one, they even say something amongst the line, I'm paraphrasing, the, the needs of the, of the regular people and the needs of the athlete don't vary in what they need, but in the degree, right, how much they need. Right. So yeah, it's so, definitely there. Yeah, and even, you know, like five by five, six by seven, whatever, you know, yeah. help them build to a heavy single once a week, like, it just the concept didn't make sense, and I thought there were there were better sources of education in strength and conditioning that was promising to deliver those things in yeah. a more effective way. Which you have been, which I'm lucky I've been before. exposed to, you know, longer than that, yeah. you know, as a as oh, a yeah. player, you know, exposed to Pollock Wins principles of strength and conditioning already for ten years, oh. and then had already been educated in it for five years when I found this. So, but you know, okay, so there is a couple of very important things there. Uh, is one thing is. I, I do believe that CrossFit's mission or Greg Glassman's mission was not to create a sport, mm. but to actually use this methodology to make people fit and ready for whatever. Yeah. But it, it eventually evolved into the sport, which most people, that's what attracted me to yeah. CrossFit, because I saw Rich Froning back in 2012, I'm like, fuck, this guy can walk in his hands and he looks good and whatever. Mm. Uh, and I was doing bodybuilding, I'm like, fuck, I look good, but I can't do anything. Yeah. So that's what I wanted to do. And so it's really funny, and CrossFit never really made this differentiation until... And I think yeah. this is what Glass has tried to do, That's right? True. You know, Dave Castro came and created the CrossFit Games as a means of celebrating and testing. You know, does, who's our training methodology we created, who is the fittest because of it? And what started to happen, you know, understandably is that the sport, like, like sport does, caught traction. There was like a spectator value. It became entertaining, and it grew. And you know, I think it it was so important for growing the methodology of CrossFit because you create heroes, you create a calendar, you create you know events for people to watch. But then where we all got a little bit lost was understanding that there was a stark difference between training people to get people better at life and training people to get better at, at a sport of CrossFit. And you know, 
as an organization, we made the mistake many a time. You know, we get caught up in, in pushing people towards a competitive side of things when really that might not have been their goals. And you know, we're now at the point where we can safely say, you know, we have different training groups with different people, each with its own unique set of goals, but we're only at that point now because we made the mistake of not doing that and not having clear cut goals and pushing everyone towards the same thing. So what Glassman has done in recent years, you know, probably the last two years, which has been a huge evolution in the sport. It, it you know led to the creation of sanctioned events and they stopped doing the regionals, they fired the whole media team because there was an understanding that look the CrossFit games is Dave Castro's thing and I'm gonna leave that to him. I'm gonna work on developing CrossFit to, to fight diabetes, and to chronic disease. chronic disease and to just get people moving. So you know the media and the promotion of CrossFit became more targeted towards that elderly populations, people at home and just moving on. And I think the, the intention there yeah, was, was, good. was really good. Noble. But, but I just think that there are much better ways yes. to get people improving at life, unfortunately. There's much more offering for coaches and, and general population to do those things than, you know, mm -hmm. lifting a PVC pipe at home with water jugs. Yes. You know, I, I think the, the concept is fantastic though, but I don't know if that's like strong enough yes. to really like propel a brand forward. Mm -hmm. What is interesting though, I think, is CrossFit has, from a methodology standpoint, even though there's a lot of things that are not 100% potentially, but it has expanded your thinking yeah. regarding strength and conditioning. Like before, strength was a separate thing, conditioning was a separate thing, and now all of a sudden, you see these humans that can deadlift 500 pounds, but like run 5K in under 20 minutes, and all this all of a sudden is possible because of this methodology, and I believe, it opens the doors of creativity for different brands to get inspired by what CrossFit does and make their own things, etc. Yeah. Uh, so and I think that's very what interesting. I think that's what we've seen is that you know the creation of the sport, and I think that's what we have to we have to keep on trying to discern the difference between you know training this, using CrossFit's methodology for improving general quality of life versus training for a sport. Because I think when you look at using CrossFit as a means of generate. Uh, you know, improving the quality of life. Like it doesn't look that different from what classic strength and conditioning conditioning principles have taught us. You know, push, pull, hinge, squat, single leg, double leg, single arm, double arm. Like develop strength, but also develop endurance, and then also develop aerobic and energy system capacity. Like that's always been there. But you know, the creation of the sport of CrossFit certainly for me, like I was really attracted to that because you know, I've been working with athletes and, and rugby players and, and people who have very specific things they need to be good at for their sport. But now the sport cross it, you have to be good at everything. And it's, the needle is constantly evolving because the sport's always evolving and the tests are changing. And you know, it was just fascinating. And I still find it really, really fascinating. Um, and you know, and what, what we're seeing is that the principles of strength and conditioning are also evolving now. You know, there wasn't too many times where you'd have to train absolute strength under extreme levels of fatigue not many other sports are going to demand that from their athletes but for example that's one of the things that you now have to do in this ball crossfit so i you know i think it's an amazing thing that's happened and, and i do really think you know talking about the changes that happen now that the sport whether it's called crossfit or not is going to continue to evolve because it, it, it's it's very interesting it's it's like there's an entertainment value for people who don't necessarily be people who want to watch it there's a huge pool of athletes who are like extremely passionate about the sport. The fortunate thing of the creation of like sanctioned events last year has now given individual event organizers the ability to run big events and they've had a year to test it out now and they're all probably licking their lips thinking like, okay, great, I'm gonna continue to run these events now and not have to pay a big lump sum of money to cross the HQ. So now they have bigger budgets to put more prize money into it, which is gonna keep on funding athletes that wanna pursue this sport, whatever it's called. So, you know, I do really think the future for the sport is really bright. What I don't know about right now is like, well, what, what is the CrossFit Games? What's going to happen there? You know, it, right now, I think the sanctioned events organizers are all going to run their event as they have been. Someone's going to have to step up and, and become, you know, the governing body of it to make sure that they're working synergistically, they're, they're ensuring the calendar's all set up so they're not doing the same dates. Is there going to be like a, a standardization of the tests that are tested? Because there never has been in the past. I don't know, someone needs to step into that role that Cross were previously doing. But what I'm interested in to see is that, well, I'd like to see what happens to Cross at Games. You know, the first thing I think is when Dave Castro took over, he's someone who's very passionate about the games and that's his thing. 
that immediately tells me, well, I think the CrossFit Games is going to stay. Like, I think he's going to push to want that to be a part of the sport still. Um, but if it doesn't, like, what, where are all the best athletes going to eventually end up at? Like, what's a Super Bowl of the sanctioned events going to be if there's no more CrossFit Games? So I think this year's CrossFit Games is going to be interesting. It's, it's a very different CrossFit Games already because of COVID-19 and everything's happened there. Um, but, you know, it's going to be interesting. So, um, from the competitive side, that, that there's a lot that happened, but now I think there's a lot of... Um, I see here something. Oh, that's not certain. Okay. Um, for people that don't know, Coastal is like a, it's like a, a party the whole day. You can hear loud music, it's awesome. Um, now, for, for the affiliate first, maybe, and then the coach out there. So, we have the affiliate that was linked to CrossFit, uh, is now an established business, runs on principles, what do they do moving forward? What, what are the questions they need to ask themselves? What's the direction? So I think, I think current, I would estimate there's probably about 800 or more affiliates who said we will be unaffiliating. Now, in terms of have they actually unaffiliated yet, well, the, the billing system works on a yearly basis. So right now it's a statement that people have made. I don't know if there's an actual withdrawal of affiliation because we've all paid for the year ahead already. Um, it's good. A lot of people are sat in limbo right now, waiting to see what happens. Um, I think what's going to one thing that's going to happen is that affiliates who just who decide to unaffiliate or, or who are just testing the waters right now and they're thinking, do we unaffiliate or do we continue? They're going to perhaps change their brand of the business. They're going to remove the white CrossFit, and they're going to probably continue to thrive and do a good job and grow their businesses without the need for having CrossFit in there. I think something's going to happen. And so if CrossFit are able to turn themselves and pull themselves out of the sticky situation they've got themselves into, is that I don't know if people are gonna still see the validity in needing to affiliate. Because at the end of the day, what does being an affiliate get you? Well, it puts you on this thing called the affiliate map. So if someone's searching for you know, CrossFit gym, they can look at this map and find somewhere, but Google does that as well. Um, there's a big financial, uh, there's a big cost that affiliates have to invest in. It's not only the 3,000 plus US dollars you have to invest in every year, but to hold the license to be able to provide CrossFit, your coaches need to be certified, which means that every three years, I think it is, they need to have their qualifications updated. So they're gonna probably see there's a potential cost saving that they can do here as well. And I think until we see, if CrossFit are able to turn around this, this situation, like I generally don't think that people are in general are uh, that, um, like, Really they're that attached to yeah. the, the crossing right now. I don't think it's like it just, I think perceptions have changed really quick. I don't think it's changing, it's changed because of what Glassman said on Monday, but I think this has been something that's gradually been coming, you know, over the last year or so. Certainly for us, you know, as soon as there was massive changes to the organization, the media team going, uh, regionals going, there was lots of good things that come out of that, but it was also kind of sad to lose such a big integral part of the sport and the, the methodology that we've all been so invested in for so long. You know, CrossFit media, social media pages were like a source of education, of like entertainment, and all that being taken away is suddenly like, even for the non-athlete, there was something that disappeared there and was definitely felt. Absolutely. Yeah, so I think what this is was like a slow loss of perhaps trust, a slow loss of attachment to CrossFit. And this was just the final thing that people were like, okay, like us, you know, they just needed a reason mm -hmm. to, to unaffiliate and disconnect themselves. Perhaps a lot of companies like Jason Kalita did with NC Fit were thinking about, you know, uh, removing the CrossFit affiliation with them. I get asked a question from business owners all the time. Why did Coastal Fitness, why do you not have CrossFit in your name? And do you think I need to affiliate? It's probably two of the questions I get asked the most from a lot of affiliate owners. Mm -hmm. And that's been a question I've been asked probably the last two years. So, you know, I think, when things like this happen, when, when a leader or a CEO or an organization slips up unintentionally, you know, if there is that real like trust and, and attachment to the company, you're gonna give them a chance. You're gonna give, you're gonna ask, you're gonna be compassionate to think they're gonna change and, and you can forgive and forget. But sometimes when someone's overstepped that line just one too many times, you're just like, that's it, I'm out. And I really get the feeling, this feeling inside me that that's what's happened yeah. with it. It's not just this one comment that's forced everyone to step away from the organization, but it's like, it's, you know, a loss of deposits in their emotional yes. bank account, where now they're like, 
they think this is just the right partnership yeah. for us anymore. How do affiliates move forward? Uh, the, so, so I mean, I just I just hope we're gonna move forward without being affiliated. I really, it's not gonna affect us. It's, not gonna it's affect really not gonna affect us because, as I said, like we don't rely on the name yeah. to build our business. If what that, what might affect us is if cross the sport disappears. You know, if the governing body disappears and someone's not able to then take control of, of competitions worldwide, and it just kind of goes crazy for a year and then just like disappears into nothing. Because you know we have a reputation of working with people who want to be competitive in the sport, and we have you know two programs who are catering to people who want to improve the sport, the perform and compete program. So if that disappears, I think that side of business may, you know, we, we may have to relook at that. But you know we also have a big part of our business which isn't catered towards that at all. It's for people who just want to improve their quality of life. They want to look good naked. They want to feel good. They want to prevent the chance of injuries, they want to improve like emotional and spiritual, you know, state state of being. So, you know, that side of business, like I don't even know if they know this has all happened. You know, I'm not even sure if they're aware that this turmoil across has happened and therefore that side of business is gonna continue to thrive and, and you know not be affected by it. But you know, affiliates who are tied to the brand, it really, I guess it just really depends on what CrossFit do now. You know, are CrossFit gonna try and rescue this and you know rebuild trust in affiliates. I think if they're gonna do that, then like the affiliates probably need to see more. I think generally speaking that affiliates, if they're gonna pay a large lump sum and invest and have their name, like we probably wanna see something in return a bit more, whether that's more social media exposure, whether it's the brand, you know, taking, you know, being reboosted in more of a positive light in the public's eye. Um, maybe there's more education that we receive as a, as a result of paying that, that money every year. Um, you know, we've already seen in the last glass open, there was, I think, like a 40% decrease in participation. And that was before any of this happened. So clearly, like, something has been happening over the last two years where the general affiliate owners and affiliates and the general customer who trained in the affiliate is falling out of love with, with that side of things. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we discussed uh, the competitive side, the affiliate side. Uh, affiliate side. But I'm interested, in, especially as a coach, um, what about the CrossFit coach out there? What what's the future for them? If yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like on that. I, I think if the CrossFit affiliate model is something that's not going to continue, if, you know, we're going to see less and less registered affiliates around the world, and there's going to be more, you know, just like coastal fitness type training organizations who look like the CrossFit gym, you know, people from this day and age will walk and be like, ah, oh, this looks just like the CrossFit gym that I used to train at, but it's not going to be called the CrossFit gym anymore, then, you know, obviously a lot of coaches brand themselves as a CrossFit coach, and that, that's become a part of their identity. You go onto Instagram and it's like, CrossFit level one is the first thing in the bio. So if that goes, if CrossFit is no longer a thing, you know, what does that coach become yeah. again? Are they just a coach? Are they a strength conditioning coach? And what does that mean? Is that then gonna jade and you know create the water, make the, the water a bit murky with regards to you know what the public perceptions, what the public perceives a coach to be? Because it's like, wow, well, everyone's just a coach now. So you know, for that person, I'm not really sure. I think it's actually gonna be a good thing, generally speaking, because if people, I think a lot of people in the CrossFit space, I think that the level one the level two and the level three is the only education that they need in order to thrive as a coach in a CrossFit facility. You know, what we all have as a collective group of coaches is like a whole plethora of different, you know, certifications and, and mentorship programs that we've done in the past that have allowed us to, to give a better prescription of what, on what mixed modal fitness is. So I think, you know, what we may see from coaches is that less reliance on the CrossFit certifications and more exploration of different training methodologies. You know, there are so many people out there who are putting fantastic information out there, and I don't think they're really utilized all that much by the CrossFit community. And then, you know, I think it's gonna force coaches to start to rethink like how they prescribe fitness. You know, if the sport doesn't exist anymore, then maybe we don't get stuck in this trap of trying to emulate the sport when we train our clients. Maybe we start to think a little bit more about health and longevity. I think what COVID has done for the world in general has made people become a little bit more health conscious. Now, how does that transfer to the CrossFit gym? Is that people are questioning now, like, do I really need to be 
finding out what my one rep max task is. Do I need to be doing a one rep max deadlift? Do I need to be doing extremely high levels of, of intensity when I do my conditioning, which wipes me out for three days? I think the general consumer is actually thinking about that. And then coming back in and thinking a little bit more about self-regulation and training, uh, pushing when they feel good, but taking a step back when they don't. So, you know, I think COVID has been a great teacher generally for the world there. And I think the loss of CrossFit as a brand and an education body would actually make coaches start to think a little bit more about what they think their prescription of fitness should be. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Yeah, and I think, you know, rather than having this one, you know, godlike education body, which has been CrossFit to a lot of CrossFit coaches, there's now like all these individual uh, education providers who are putting some really great stuff out there who are all going to be able to help coaches and, and you know, build our, yeah, you know, build our, our toolbox. Yeah, and help us serve client. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's very interesting. Um, yeah, what do you think, um, where, what's the future for Coastal? Um, where, where do you see this, this gym going? And what's the future for mixed model fitness or health and wellness coaching? Or? Yeah, I think, you know, I think for us, I think something we do well is we look after the training piece well. You know, it's something we've been so passionate about, something certainly I've been really passionate about over the years I've been in this game, is that, you know, I think we've kind of got that, the, the training piece sorted to an extent. Still always evolving, still can improve. Uh, for us, we're really gonna start to focus on, you know, the wellness and the health side of things a little bit more now, which is, you know, providing accessible information and education to the general consumer who wants to learn more about nutrition, uh, who wants to learn about how to apply nutrition as well, who wants to learn about sleep, who wants to learn about uh, mental health or mindset. You know, I think those are really integral parts of, you know, our mission, which is to improve people's ability to live, perform, compete. And we've got to do more there. And so, you know, working with yourself and the rest of the team to try and create some information accessible platforms for people to start to, you know, upskill themselves there. So again, like, are we affected by, you know, what's happening right now? Not really, you know, but if, if, if the sport does disappear um, or, you know, dwindle into all transfer form or adjust, you know, then we need to make the decision, is this something we want to be a part of? Um, and, you know, if we have athletes here who, you know, that has been their livelihood or that's been something that's been a really keen interest of theirs, then, you know, that will have to change and that will be reflected in the way that we train, we program. But, you know, really, I don't think that's going to be the case. I think competitions, call it CrossFit, call it fitness, whatever you want to call it, are going to be there for a long time now. You know, the market has been created, there's a big interest, there's sponsors and companies who are now like in the, in the fitness CrossFit space who created their brand based entirely off it. So they're just going to pivot and leverage to make sure that they're still in that like competitive space. And you know, there's just so many people at top level now who are aspiring to be professional athletes within the sport that I actually think that if the CrossFit Games does disappear, they're just those people are going to have even more opportunities. It's going to be bigger prize purses, perhaps, for these individual sanctioned events. Uh, sports is going to get behind them more because there isn't this kind of one monopoly that's taking control of everything. Um, you know, if television gets involved, then like these athletes have a chance to become superstars. Uh, so yeah, you know, I don't, I don't think that's something that's going to disappear. Mm -hmm. I like how you see the potential positive in uh, all that has happened, and so you spoke about potential for the affiliate, for the coach to expand uh, their knowledge and improve their services and uh, rethink the way they coach people and program for people and help their people. So that's a good thing. And then a potential positive for the athletes out there that wanna step it up and become professional, which is which a lot of athletes that are not at the top, you know, struggle with. So that's that's very interesting. You know, I really do and I think it was my say the same mindset with, and I think a lot of us are seeing it now, is you know, with, with COVID and everything that happened, like there are so many positives that will come out of it. I do think though, you know, it's a really, I do feel for Dave Castro in a lot of ways, you know, it's a really hard position to yeah, step into right. now and to try and, uh, and try to salvage, you know, what's happened in just such a short amount of time. I do think that Dave Castro does have a big and very loyal following within the CrossFit community. You know, you kind of either love him or you hate him, but you know, he does have a group of loyal followers that I think, you know, have some confidence in the fact that he's now stepped into that role. Do we know about 
Craig Dawson's involvement? No, no one knows. And that's always kind of been the, the case with CrossFit is there's a lot of stuff that goes on behind closed doors that as a consumer, you don't really hear about. You know, as affiliates, we never find out about anything. We just see it in an Instagram post and suddenly we have to pivot and change our businesses based on something that comes on social media, which I really think is yeah. not the best way to do things if you're an organization that's trying to be, you know, trying to grow and be well respected around the world. So it's a tough one. And, you know, I've, I've, I've tried to think, you know, how can they pivot? How can they change? Like, where is, you know, what opportunities they have as a business to, like, you know, bring this thing back? And I think it is, it is hard. Dave Castro isn't someone who's necessarily ever been about the health side of CrossFit. Um, so to see him pivot and suddenly become really interested in that, I just don't really see it happening. Um, I do think that he's going to try and salvage the sport side of things somehow. Um, you know, Greg Glassman's fight with diabetes and, and you know, chronic disease, is that now going to stop? Who's going to take that over? I mean, it's just, there's just so many, so many question marks and I really do feel for affiliates who are in a position where they've you know, they built a brand over five, 10, 15 years yeah. that has been so closely associated with the brand uh, that you know, they're now in a position where they're having to probably think about rebrand, you know, trying to think about you know, basically changing that whole business model. Yeah. So, yeah, interesting time. But as long, I think as well at the same time as what Coastal Fitness is doing, if you can keep your members happy, give them a community and give them results, that's never gonna be a bad thing. You know what, absolutely, and I think, and, and again, like the fact that there's gonna be less reliance on this body of CrossFit to, to help businesses grow, it's gonna, it's gonna force businesses to really look at themselves and say, well, what can we do better? You know, what can we control? We always talk about controlling the controllables, and you know, affiliation to an, an outside brand is not really controlling the controllables. And if you put in your eggs in that basket, something happens to that organization, it can really, you know, have big knock-on effects that you can't do anything about. So I think it's gonna be a good wake-up call for a lot of organizations to look at themselves and be like, well, this is now gone, what are we gonna to do to step up our game? So again, like, I really just do think it's gonna be a really great thing in, in general. Mm -hmm. Man, this COVID-19 has been, whoa. What a year. You know, one, one thing that is, that uh, this situation and COVID-19 has taught me, uh, just as maybe closing this episode, because it's tied to it, of course, is that you can't take anything for granted. You know, we like we were taking the gym for granted, training for granted, uh, CrossFit, whatever, and everything can just disappear like that. And if you don't have things built up and set up uh, and diversify things, you're you're in a bad position. So yeah, and I don't think as well, just to add on that, like you just can't plan. Yeah, you can't plan so the future. True. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I think for me as a coach, for other coaches out there, I feel like there's, if you, if you are really passionate about what you do and you really want to help people, there's going to be a job out there for you. So people that have been tied to CrossFit and are maybe worried, okay, what do I do now? There's, oh man, I feel like the, the job of the coach, and that's what I would really would love to see and that's what I'm seeing, is going to be super important down the line. Everyone is going to need some kind of intermediate between you know, um, feeling okay and then that disease, so someone that can help you become healthier and, and fitter. So if you do your job well and, and you're really passionate about that, there's gonna be always something there for you. Yeah, the, the world needs us yes. now more than ever. Exactly. And so, uh, there's gonna be more opportunity for us, you know, than ever before. Yeah. For sure, with or without prospect. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Cool. Well, Sad, thank you so much for thank jumping you. on me, mate. This is so much this was like your you. idea to, yeah. to do this, and as soon as you said it, I was like, yeah, let's, yes. let's do it, awesome. let's just share our thoughts. Yeah. Uh, and you know, I think this is something that this this is going to be evolving, adapting every single day. You know, just you know, keeping our eyes on the crossword case and seeing what happens with the business. You know, I'm excited to see what happens, whether it's good or bad. I think change is always a good in the long term. Um, but yeah, yeah, thank you for thank, thank you for your you. questions and thank thanks you so for. Much. Thanks for the critical thinking. Yes, thank you, appreciate you. Awesome. <laughs> well, buddy. I hope it wasn't too... Uh, That's great. Yeah, That's great. I hope people will enjoy it. How long will we? Uh, 30, maybe 35. Oof.